This is part two of the mailbag video. Part one aired last week. So let's continue. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. With a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. I mentioned that this mailbag will, ha will have a lot to do with power. So this is the next one. Now this is not defective. It has a reason that it's open here. But what is it? It is a UPS, a uninterruptible power source or power supply, but it is a very special one. It has output voltage of 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt, and even power over ethernet with 15 or 24 volts. And it can be charged with 220 volt or also with 110 volt. And if we go, if we look at its specifications, it has a battery of 10 amp hours and an output power of 36 watt. Now, why do I think this is an interesting thing? I have some applications where I need not only 5 volt, but also 12 volt and 24 volt uh, power over ethernet. So this is a perfect fit here. You also have a USB, by the way. And it has a quite a big battery here, 10,400 milliampere hour. I thought, okay, this is a nice device, but I was surprised when I opened it up. First, you see the batteries. They are not overrated batteries. 2,600 milliampere hours is not a, is a reasonable number. I did not do the check, but uh, it lasts for a very, very long time for my application. But what was interesting was how complex this circuit is. For example, here, this circuit is for the 24 volts. And here you have several switching voltage regulators for each of these three voltages and also for, um, for the 15 volts for the PoE. And everything is protected. And then I thought, okay, this is probably necessary. But then I saw a small detail. And I think this is really very interesting. You see here, we have wires on all batteries. You probably ask yourself, why do they add wires to the batteries in the middle? Usually you have batteries only to the plus and the minus. This is for balancing these batteries here. And this is something which is really interesting. This is for me, not expected quality aspect for, um, you will see the price afterwards, but this is really, these batteries, if they are not uh, absolutely equal, they will still survive a long time. Now let's have a look at the listing. And here you are probably a bit astonished. Here is the listing. And here is the version I have, the two ampere, 10 ampere hour version. There are cheaper ones, for example, one ampere and 8,800 milliampere hours, but the difference is only about $3. Shipping is not cheap, is $8.92 to Switzerland. Maybe it's different to other countries, but shipping such large uh, batteries uh, these days is no more so easy. I still think the price is very good if you have the need for such a uh, battery operated UPS. For example, you could add one or two uh, critical devices on 5 volt and maybe your router works on 12 volt. So this is a perfect UPS, which protects your equipment for a low budget. Now I have to put it together again. Finished like new. The last one has to do with this one. A BMS for my big battery, and this one is dead, defective. I do not exactly know why. I probably will open it and have a look at it, but uh, suddenly it was dead. And I fear that I know who is responsible for that. This is a Bluetooth dongle which transmits the readings of the BMS to the smartphone. 
and it is connected to this UART connector here. Now there is also a project where you can replace this Bluetooth dongle with an ESP8266 and this is what I did. If we have a look at a typical battery pack, we see the following components. A battery, a battery management system and a load. In my situation, it is a DC converter to 13.8 volt. How are these parts connected? The BMS is on the low side. So one wire is connected to the battery's negative and the second is connected to the load. The positive of the battery is directly connected to the positive input of the load. The charger, by the way, is connected in parallel to the load. This is a typical low side installation. A high side devices would be inserted in the plus line. The most important job of the BMS is to switch the load off if the battery voltage is too low or too high. Because I wanted to connect an ESP8266 instead of the Bluetooth device connected to the data pins of the BMS, I had to power it from somewhere. Without thinking, I connected it to the 13.8 volt supply. So its ground was connected to the light blue color, not the dark blue of the battery. If the BMS is on, the light and the dark blue are connected by strong FETs and this voltage is nearly zero. No problem with the data line, it has 3.3 volts as expected by the BMS. But what happens if the BMS switches off? This resistance becomes high and because the resistance inside the converter is lower, the light blue line is pulled towards the 24 volts. So the data line voltage inside the BMS is undoubtedly higher than 3.3 volt. So I assume this killed the BMS. And this is why I do not like these low side acrobatics. I love a stable ground reference. Therefore, I'm a big fan of high side switches and current meters. But I know these are more expensive. If I power the ESP8266 independently, it gets the same ground as the VLE dongle and the problem is solved. Next time I want to do it better and this is why I ordered this power supply. Very small one. It has an input voltage of 9 to 18 volt and an output voltage of 5 volt with 1 ampere. That's okay for my needs. 5 volt, 1 ampere is okay for an ESP8266. But why do I need a 9 to 18 volt input? Because I need an insulation from the primary to the secondary. As we saw before, this is important. Here I have this uh, power supply instrumented. The input is also the 14.4 volt from before. And the output goes to the electronic load with one ampere. And now I switch it on. And you see, it still has 4.9 volts. So the power supply works perfectly. Now we have to check if it is insulated, of course. So the, in the input ground is here, the output ground is here, and here it's absolutely no connection. Exactly what I need. Here is the listing. It costs $11 for two pieces. And it is free shipping. And by the way, Shenzhen Highlink Electronic, we know because they do also produce these 24 gigahertz radar sensors we had in one of our videos. We see it here. This is a very unspectacular product. It is only this one which moves here. And here it's a syringe with flux. Now flux is one of the most overseen ingredients of electronics. I only can suggest you to use more flux. Always use flux with soldering. Always use flux with desoldering. It makes your life much, much easier. You get flux and solder paste in these syringes. And I bought one of those to press the 
flux out of this syringe. But this is not very, very handy because it needs a lot of pressure. Now I'm left-handed, but I show you how it works with, uh, with a right hand. If you would have to solder this ESP32, you just have the right way to apply solder here. Perfect. You just have to press here and the solder exits. I show you here. Very, very controlled. Now the material and everything is quite shitty, I have to admit. This is a standard screw here uh, for, for a cent or two. And uh, this is a standard plastic. Everything not high quality, not, no nice touch, nothing. But it works. And here is its listing. You can buy one or two and you can buy it with syringe or without syringe. I bought two without syringe. So they were $4.47 and $4 shipping. So it's below $10. Now this is very expensive if you compare it with the UPS from before. Just a bit of plastic and a screw, but the value in your lab is absolutely worth the money. By the way, it works also with solder paste, of course. This was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.